Your faith and prayers have sustained me. What I hear most often as I travel the country are five words that never, ever fail to touch my heart. That's, I am praying for you. I hear it so often. I am praying for you, Mr. President. Most importantly, I brought my Bible. Okay? But my father came from a Kenyan family that includes generations of Muslims. As the Holy Quran tells us, the Holy Quran teaches that, the Holy Quran tells us, and the Holy Quran also says, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. And Ed E. Shoma Mubarak. To whom much is given, much is expected. I was sworn in on the very Bible from which my mother would teach us as young children. My mother gave me this Bible, this very Bible, many years ago. And that faith lives on in my heart every single day. We are not just flesh and bone and blood. We are human beings with souls. Our Republic was formed on the basis that freedom is not a gift from government, but that freedom is a gift from God. And America will thrive as long as we continue to have faith in each other and faith in God. As long as we have God, we are never, ever alone. Christianity, when you think of what's happening, you look at the numbers. I talk about Sunday school, people don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. It's true, they don't know what I'm talking about. When you look, instead of going this way, you're going to be going this way. You may be going this way, but you're going to be going, we're going to bring it back. Because it's a good thing. It's a good thing. They treated you like it was a bad thing, but it's a great thing, not a good thing. It's a great thing. So, we're going to bring it back. Because it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I think we can do really something special. And we're going to protect Christianity. And I can say that. I don't have to be politically correct. Or we're going to protect it. You know? And I, I asked Jerry and I asked some of the folks, because I hear this is a major theme right here, but 2 Corinthians, right? 2 Corinthians 317. That's the whole ball game. Where the Spirit of the Lord, right? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And it's so representative of what's taken place. But we are going to protect Christianity. And if you look what's going on throughout the world, you look at Syria, where they're, if you're Christian, they're chopping off heads. You look at the different places, and Christianity, it's under siege. I'm a Protestant, I'm very proud of it, Presbyterian to be exact. But I'm very proud of it, very, very proud of it. And we've got to protect because bad things are happening. Very bad things are happening. And we don't, I don't know what it is, we don't band together, maybe. I will tell you, I will tell you, Christianity is under siege, whether we want to talk about it or we don't want to talk about it. And if I said some of the things about Christians that I've said about the Muslims, where we have a problem, and it's a problem we have to talk about. And I brought it out. I took a lot of heat for bringing it out. And I will tell you that now people are saying he did a great service. Just like when I brought out illegal immigration, everybody went crazy about Trump. How could he say that? And then about two weeks later, everyone's trying to say, well, you know, Trump's right, because they see the murder of Kate in San Francisco and Jamil in Los Angeles and so many others, the tremendous crime and what it does to your economy. So I brought these things out. I feel I have an obligation to bring them out. You know, remember, I'm self-funding my campaign, so I don't have anybody speaking in my ear. So, so I just have to say this because, you know, I'm a, I'm a true believer, and you're many true believers. I hope all. Is everybody a true believer in this room? But Christianity is under tremendous siege. And if I said that about Christians, I would have less backup than by saying it about Muslims. I had tremendous backup. Now everyone's saying, wow, 
it was such a great thing to say because now everybody's talking about it. I mean, people are flying planes into the World Trade Center. Let's talk about it. People are shooting in California. People are shooting in Paris. 130 people killed in Paris. Nobody wants to talk about it. We have a president that doesn't want to say radical Islamic terrorism. He doesn't want to talk about radical Islamic terror. He doesn't want to even mention it. It's like it doesn't exist. It exists. And I'll tell you something. If I said that about Christians, and if I said banned, I'm telling you, I would have had less difficulty. And that's pretty sad because we're Christians. I'm Protestant. I'm Presbyterian. Are you surprised to hear that? Yeah. I always like to bring my communion pictures along. Sometimes I'll bring a communion, but I didn't want to. I think you believe me, right? You've seen it. But, but the, the power of, of our, our group of people together, I mean, if you add it up, I was trying to do it the other day. I was with one of the, the great ministers. And I said, you know, if you think about this country, because now you're talking about men and women, you're talking about together. So the group is larger. Christians, Christians in this country is larger than men or women. And I said, how many Christians do you think? And it could be like 240, 250 million, you know, a big portion of, and yet we don't exert the power that we should have. Now, I think some of the churches are afraid of their tax status, to be honest. You know, they're afraid they're going to lose their tax status if they get too political. Um, some of them just can't endorse. But you know, the fact is that there's nothing the politicians can do to you if you band together, you have too much power. But the Christians don't use their power. They don't need your, they don't use your power. And, and honestly, you have, by far, it's the strongest. I mean, you talk about lobbies, you have the strongest lobby ever. But I never hear about a Christian lobby. I hear great people, like the pastor. I hear some unbelievable people. Many, many friends are, are ministers, and lots of them have endorsed me already. But I have to tell you that we don't hear about strength, and we have to strengthen, because we are getting, if you look, it's death by a million cuts. We are getting less and less and less powerful in terms of a religion and in terms of a force. And honestly, whether it's one leader or a number of people, uh, potentially you have tremendous power when they don't want to say Merry Christmas in department stores anymore. I won't shop in places that don't say Merry Christmas. Guess what? I don't do too much shopping because, no, no, it's true. When I see, when I see these stores and they, you know, they have a red wall and they have nothing on it. They don't want to say Merry Christmas anymore. I say, why don't you say Merry Christmas? Well, we're not allowed to. The owner doesn't want us to. The, you know, these big department stores, they're not allowed to. And I'll tell you one thing. We're going to be saying Merry Christmas again. Just remember. And by the way, Christianity will have power without having to form. Because if I'm there, you're going to have plenty of power. You don't need anybody else. You're going to have somebody representing you very, very well well remember that so so it's an honor to be here and I know you're packed and you know they have a... for too long politicians have tried oh have they tried to centralize authority among the hands of a small few in our nation's capital I see them all the time bureaucrats think they can run over your lives overrule your values, meddle in your faith, and tell you how to live, what to say, and where to pray. But we know that parents, not bureaucrats, know best how to raise their children and create a thriving society. And we know that families and churches, not government officials, know best how to create a strong and loving community. And above all else, we know this. In America, we don't worship government, we worship God.
liberty is enshrined in the very First Amendment in the Bill of Rights. The American founders invoked our Creator four times in the Declaration of Independence. Benjamin Franklin reminded his colleagues at the Constitutional Convention to begin by bowing their heads in prayer. I remind you that we're going to start saying Merry Christmas again. I also want to speak to all of the people, see, you thought I forgot, in our faith community who are here with us tonight, veterans and non-veterans alike. You're never going to be forgotten. You'll never be forgotten. My administration will always support and defend your religious liberty. We don't want to see God forced out of the public square, driven out of our schools, or pushed out of our civic life. We want to see prayers before football games if they want to give prayers. children to have the opportunity to know the blessings of God. We will not allow the government to censor sermons, to restrict the free speech of our pastors and our preachers and the people that we most respect, like Robert. That is why, just as I promised Pastor Jeffress and other faith leaders, I just signed an executive order following, and this is something that makes me very happy and very proud, following through on my campaign pledge to stop the Johnson Amendment from interfering with your First Amendment rights. As I am president, no one is going to stop you from practicing your faith or from preaching what is in your heart. We want to hear him.